Hello and welcome to a follow-up on our previous LED Blink program tutorial. In the last tutorial, we created a short program which blinked the LEDs on our STM32F4 discovery board on and off at about one second intervals. We achieved this by writing values directly to control and output registers in the STM32F407 microcontroller. Whilst this is a good start, in terms of getting used to using and adjusting registers, in larger projects, it can get a little bit confusing if you aren't used to this process. Thankfully, ST Microelectronics have written HAL libraries which contain many functions and macros which will make our lives somewhat easier. In this tutorial, we're going to rewrite our previous Blink code to use the HAL libraries. Hopefully, this will give you a good idea what HAL functions can do. If you are interested in writing this program from scratch, this tutorial will still be applicable. There is a write-up of this video on my website where you can find the source code if you need it. Okay, let's get started. After you've created your Keel project, as explained in the video in the cards above, the first step we need to do is include the stm32f4xx.h file. Then we write our main loop, and then we can define a structure which will help us initialize the GPIO. Use the, the type GPIO in its type def to define a structure which we will call GPIOD params. We now need to enable the clock on the GPIOD port. This can be done with the HAL macro, double underscore, HAL RCC GPIOD clock enable. You can identify a HAL macro by the double underscore at the beginning. Next, we need to define pins 12 to 15 as outputs. The LED pins are on the screen now for your reference, so you can see which one, to, uh, which one corresponds to which color. Let's select the pins we want to configure using the GPIOD param structure we previously defined. We select the pin function by using a dot, then pin, then list the, the pins that we want to select. This is done in the format GPIO underscore pin underscore 12, 13, or 14, and so on. Each pin is separated by the bitwise OR function as shown here. Note that using the full stop operator allows us to set certain members of the initialization structure we defined earlier. These members include output type, output speed, alternate functions, uh, and many more. This will really help when we come to define uh, things like the SPI communication uh, pins and the I squared C, for example. By selecting these pins as a group, we can configure them together. Note that to configure groups of pins, they must be on the same GPIO port. If they are on different ports, then you'll have to configure them separately. Let's now set these pins to output mode by selecting the mode of the structure and then defining these pins as push pull outputs with the GPIO mode output double P definition. Then we need to define the speed of transmission as low because these are just LEDs. We're not communicating anything. It doesn't have to be fast. We do that with the following GPIO speed parameter, GPIO speed low. Now we use the HAL function, HAL GPIO init with the par parameters GPIOD and the address of our initialization structure by using the ampersand operator before our structure. This sets the pin parameters we just configured into port D of the GPIO. Hopefully you can start to see how the HAL functions will end up making our lives a bit easier when it comes to more complex code, it sort of stops us having to deal with uh, control registers individually. Now that's the initialization of the GPIO complete, let's get into our main loop. We will use an infinite while loop, so the program doesn't terminate after a single iteration. In this while loop we need to turn our LEDs on, then wait for a predetermined amount of time, and then turn them off, and so on. The HAL command, HAL GPIO write pin, with the pins we want to set as parameters, will switch the, on the LEDs. The pins are separated by commas, sorry, actually the OR function again, the bitwise OR function, and the GPIO pin set function will set them high, turning on the LEDs. This function, with the same pins, but with the GPIO pin reset parameter, will turn off the LEDs. Now we need to implement a delay. The HAL libraries include a delay function called HAL delay, 
but this has some implementation problems when setting up a project uh, like we have. So we'll simply use a for loop to create this delay. A timer would be more accurate, but it's a little more of an advanced uh, problem, uh, which we'll cover in a tutorial later. We need to initialize our 32-bit unsigned integer iteration variable that we'll call i. The for loop will start at zero and iterate up to, say, two million times. We need, to we need this delay to go after the LEDs have been turned on and again after they have been turned off. We are ready to build the program using the build button or the F7 keyboard shortcut. You should see it build without any errors. Now let's upload it to the discovery board. Press the download button or the F8 shortcut and the code has now been uploaded to the discovery board indicated by the programming done outputs in the build window. The LEDs on your STM32 F4 discovery board should now be blinking on and off. Hopefully this video has given you a good overview of some of the HAL functions that you can use in your pro programs and how they can help you. This will form a good starting point for some of our future tutorials. Thank you for watching. If this video has helped you, please consider liking and subscribing.